You're listening to The Dollop on the All Things Comedy Network. This is an American History Podcast. Each week, I, Dave Anthony, read a story from American history to my nemesis. Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Uh, you say it, and there's a lot of meaning behind it. That's not great. It's hostile. What you're saying. It's a, it's a, uh, you have a take me down aura where you're. <laughs> what is your problem? Well, I think you're trying to take me down. Uh, well, I don't know. You've just l- labeled whole, me your nemesis. I don't know if it was a, a label or if it was an or, or organic. All right. Name that came out that was very apl- applicable to your. All right, all right. Well, let's call it shady character. All right. All right. Let's just. Let's, let's just what? Start, let's just start yeah, this. Just start the show? Yep. Okay. Good to go. And called it, quote, his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name is Gary. <laughs> My name's Gary. Wait. Is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five part coefficient. <laughs> Five rounds of play. Now hit him with the puppy. <laughs> you both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Nicely yes, done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Your hat has swear words on it. Yeah. That's not great for kids. Well, then they don't need to come into the studio and read it. Which reminds me, if you want to see what's on my hat, you can go to the All Things Comedy YouTube page, and you can see. Be That's fucking a simple nice. message. That's what it says. Just be nice to people, people. Okay? Come on. How hard is that? Uh, David, guess who's going to Placentia? <laughs> That's a place in California, sort of. I believe it's in Orange County. I'll be there this Tuesday. Oh, the day this comes out, uh, October 8th at 7 p.m. at a place called uh, oh, good. the Clubhouse. Good. The Clubhouse. I'll that be was, there. That was great. Pretty good. That's all I got this week. <laughs> Got an album. It'll be coming out. Until then, it's probably going to be some uh, <laughs> no plugs. <laughs> also, we should say that we're going to be in uh, Madison on uh, October 18th and Milwaukee on October 20th. And uh, you Europe. can find out uh, any of that stuff at dollarpodcast.com. And then, yes, And also, we go to Europe. We're, uh, we've added a show in London on November 22nd. Uh, we're going to be in Stockholm. My dad's taking up most of the tickets for that second. Oh, uh, he is? Okay, great. Uh, Oslo, uh, Amsterdam, Glasgow, Manchester, London. Uh, I already said that. Sold out. Sorry. Birmingham, Cardiff, uh, Dublin, Copenhagen, uh, and then, of course, the London show on the 22nd. Uh, and look, you guys have trains. You guys can take the trains between all the shows. Yep. Go to all of them. Yep. Because they're all going to be different topics. Yep. So you might as well. Go I'm even going to all of them. Yep, I might I'm do that. I haven't decided check yet. Them out. Yeah, we might have some comics just standing for me, and I don't do it. Great, perfect, good sell. That's something uh, Nemesis would be excited about. Not sure why we had to take this turn. Oh, you're not sure? No. Bombas. <laughs> Bombas are are uh, our sponsor. They are uh, they're sock people. Well, they're sock company. Our people. I mean, the people who are into socks. Well, that's every person. There's We're people. all into socks. I do it before I put my shoes on. I get into mm, socks. Don't talk. <laughs> uh, look, we all love to refresh our snack drawers, but when's the last time you refreshed your sock drawer? I got to say, when I didn't have a lot of money, and I know another friend who did this, if you're really, really low on funds and you just buy new socks and, and refresh all the socks, it's a tremendous feeling. Yeah. When you're, when socks you're, are key. Yeah, they really I are. I will say, when I travel... The amount of socks I take is absurd. Yeah, I'm yeah. right there with you. Yeah. Uh, if you can't uh, remember last time you re- refreshed your sock drawer, it's probably time for an upgrade. Bomba socks are made with comfort innovations like arch support, a seamless toe, a cushioned footbed. All socks speak for super comfortable. When they come, uh, sorry, they come in hundreds of colors and styles, making them perfect for men, women, and kids. I uh, have, uh, there, I have the the little uh, what are they called? The little ones that are just on your feet. Booties. Uh, booties. I got the booties. I got the hiking ones. Yeah. Which are great. Yeah. Uh, those are good for the hikes, which I like to hike. Yeah. And uh, they make my feet fly. Is that maybe, the right word? Let me go back to the fresh, iPad fresh for, feet. Yep. Uh, Bombas has a new line of merino wool socks that are made from soft, warm, and naturally moisture-wicking merino wool designed with all of Bombas' classic comfort features. 
From keeping cool and dry on your morning run to staying comfortable in your office's freezing air conditioning, Bombas socks are ready to work as hard as you do. And for every pair of socks you buy, Bombas will donate a pair to someone in need. Very important. Great part. Bombas are what feet daydream about. Yep. Mm-hmm. When when if your feet are just disprove it. Yeah, I can't. Thank you. Because what, what are you going to say? Get inside hey, the head hey, of your foot. feet. What's going on? Yeah, What's exactly. going on? What do you think about right now, foot? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Buy your Bombas at bombas.com slash dollop today and get 20% off your first purchase. That's a B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash dollop for 20% off bombas.com slash dollop. Uh, nice. We're also brought to you by Casper. Uh, Casper is a sleep brand that makes ex- expertly designed products to help you get your Best rest one night at a time. Now you, uh, you're a big fan. Big fan, you are. Big fan. Uh, it came in a box. You open it up. Mm-hmm. It puffed up like a like a. Got my dad one. Yep. Got your dad one. Yep. Uh, you sleep on it with your cat, uh, yep. Jose. Jose takes up half of the bed. Couple of couple of indents when you get up in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, uh, not a joke. I'll nope. let you know when you've struck something that's not real. It's, it's you just you just kind of sink into that bad boy a little bit. Both of us do, and it just forms around your your body, like hugs you a little bit. Yep, I love it. Uh, so if you receive uh, a hybrid mattress, you're encouraged. Oh, Matt. Casper products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves, providing supportive comfort for all kinds of bodies. The original Casper mattress combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep service with the right amounts of both sink and bounce and you got the bounce telling you big boy what's your hey, problem how are you what casper now offers three other mattresses the wave the essential and the hybrid the wave features a patent pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body like a pair for me uh, the essential has a streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night and the hybrids uh, combine the pressure relief of the award-winning foam with durable yet gentle springs. Remember when we saw Bert at the airport and he was going, Dave, you got dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. No, Bill Burr. Uh, so they deliver it right to your door in a box and then it pops open and gets bigger. Uh, hassle-free returns if you're not completely satisfied. They also offer a wide array of other products like pillows, sheets, all that good stuff that you sleep on. Free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, you can be sure of your purchase with the Casper's 100 night risk free sleep on it trial. So get $100 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash dollop and using code dollop at checkout. That's casper.com slash dollop and use code dollop at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Nice. And nice. And then we are also uh, partly brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace, of course, a website company that I have my uh, comedy website, uh, you your comedy website, yes. and then we have them for the Dollop sources and, of course, the Dollop webpage. So we clearly enjoy the Squarespace. We're all in. Yes. 100%. 100%. 100%ers. Yes. Uh, look, uh, it's a great website company. Uh, I like it because I really like the templates. I think it's super easy to use. Uh, you, you know, you can publish, do all the things you do on a website. Yeah. The magical stuff. It's very straightforward. Uh, so even if you want to just uh, announce an upcoming event or special product, jump in there. Get on. Get on Squarespace. Get it done. They got beautiful templates created by world-class designers. You ever sit around and think, what did Squarespace use to build their website promoting Squarespace? I don't. Sort of a tree falling in the woods home. I don't. I've never thought that. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box. A new way to buy domains and choose from over 200 extensions, analytics that help you grow in real time. Built-in search engine optimization, free and secure hosting, nothing to patch your upgrade ever. 24-7 award-winning customer support. Mm-hmm. So, uh, look, if you're ready, if you're ready to start, if you're ready to do this, if you're ready to, to Squarespace it, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you use the offer code dollop to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com. Enter code dollop. Okay. D O L L O P for those of you who don't yeah, know. Yeah, you spell. know me. Don't ever do that again. D O L L O P. Yeah, you know me. Nineteen sixty seven. Yeah. The year of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. Ginger Baker. That's right. Just passed yeah. away. Oh, did he? Yeah, he died today. He did? Yeah. I didn't know he was still alive. Well, this is quite a roller coaster you've gone on just now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Palo Alto, California, working class town, 
back then. Now it's not. Now it's one of the richest places on earth. Sure. You know, usual suburban homes, nice lawns. Uh, main driver of uh, the town uh, was Stanford U- University. Okay. Uh, the university moved its medical center there from San Francisco, and together with the city, they opened an industrial park that created tons of jobs, attracted new residents. So Palo Alto had great schools. Okay. Because it's near Stanford, you know. Uh, some said the best in the country. Okay. One school, Cubberly High School, stood out in the district for its innovation. <laughs> mm. Oh, I just got a text. I should turn this off, but uh, I bought my dog a new toy, and he got the squeaker out in under five minutes. Can we just stick to the... And the thing, I bought it. It said it said the most durable toy. Let's just... That's what? clearly not durable. Uh, c- Coverly... He gets the squeaker out in five. Coverly High School, it's called? Yeah. Coverly High School, okay. And it, it was, just... and people took notice around the area that it was... Just Larry, I mean... That it was doing some new stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... It's innovative. It's an innovative school. The principal allowed teachers to try out unconventional curriculums and teaching tools where students could role play in order to experience what they were learning about. Okay. One teacher at Cubberly who frequently used simulations was 25-year-old Ron Jones, the school's history and social studies teacher. Okay. He, uh, he joined the school in 1965. He was a, uh, a, Stan- a Stanford graduate, okay. a master's degree, okay. which is pretty, pretty fancy. Sure. Uh, he stood out a bit. Uh, he didn't dress up in a suit and tie like the other teachers. He's in a suit and a tie there. Well, no, he's got a short sleeve shirt. Oh, on. okay. So he's like Dennis Fromm's. Yeah, he's going short sleevey. Uh, he wore a plain white, nup, plain white, and, uh, the plain white button-up shirts, and he'd roll his shirt sleeves up. Okay. Right, so right. criminal activity as far sure. as the conservatives are concerned. Uh, he also caused uh, cause stirs because he would bring in guest speakers like communists, uh, a Klansman, and a member of the American Nazi Party. This is a high school? Yeah. Okay. So he's kind of sh- he's kind of showing the kids like, well, this is what these people are like. Right. And he would allow them to come in, and then, I mean, ideally, you're not like, oh, I want to do that. Ideally, no. Then yeah. he talks about it afterwards, and he goes, well, that guy's fucked in the head. Well, also, I would say that the thing that we do here is, like, avoid the tough yes. subjects. So it's like, yeah, that is good. I mean, I'm sure it's interesting. And as, as, long, well. as long as it's framed correctly, yeah. then it's As long fine. as you're not, like, when the Klan's guy's about to come in, like, this next guy is awesome. <laughs> You know, like you just have to just be like, all right, look, these guys are real douchebags. One of them said he'd come in here for some reason. Yeah. So, um, so Jones was uh, also an actor and a fiction writer, and he would bring his creative side to the classes to, okay. when he's teaching the kids uh, with the simulations, especially. Now, yeah. When you say simulations, you mean the the bringing in the speakers, or there's more? To no, the there's more. He would like do like a role play thing, like a you know, like you would have kids act play. something out and go, okay. "Well, this is why this is up- applicable to okay, okay. whatever." Um, he used simulations because he uh, wanted to show all sides of a situation. Experimental experimental teaching was very big at the time, mm-hmm. right? 1967. Jones was an exceptional teacher, and all the students wanted to be in his class. Like if you were in his class, other students were jealous. Okay, for three periods a day. He taught contemporary history class. Okay. And in March of 67, he was teaching about the time just before World War II, focusing on Germany. Okay. So I don't know if you know history, but Germany in World War II. No, no, no. I know this one. Not great. Good guys. Not, no. Sorry. Bad guys. Bad guys. guys. Uh, Not, kind of everyone's a bad guy, but uh, they're specifically really bad. The worst guys. Yeah. They're the worst guys. Okay. By far. Okay. Well, the Japanese are not great either. There's a lot of killing happening. Okay. Okay. Um, a student asked how the Germans were able to carry out the atrocities of the Holocaust. Good question. Great question. How does a country come to that place? Yeah. And Jones didn't have an answer. Okay. Later that week, he informed his classes there would be some role playing the next week. Mm. Now, these are all pretty clean cut, cut like 15 year old kids, mm-hmm. right? So that Monday, the students arrived in Jones's class to find all the chairs in a row. Jones had darkened the room, torn down all the posters, and put on Wagner on the stereo. And these are these are children. They're fifteen. Okay. He told them there was going to be an experiment. 
Your face. Wait a minute. Every student who participated will receive an A. Okay. If they didn't participate, they had to go to the library. If they just went along, they would get a C. If they were active, they would get an A. If they were sent to the library, they got an F. Okay. <laughs> what? So it's a big deal because an A in this class would help you get into college. Like it's a really big sure. class. Sure, and an F would really hurt. And he wasn't using, he wasn't his usual smiling self on Monday. They were very used to a very happy teacher. They, they called him by his first name, Ron. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's super 60s. Uh, he's intense okay. on this day. This is not something they'd seen before. He was a lot of fun to be around. Uh, and now he's saying they had to call him Mr. Jones. They... They have to call in Mr. Jones? Yeah, before they, had to, before they oh, call him Ron. Oh, right, right. Hey, Ron. Oh, right, okay, and sorry. I, I like, think no. you said call in Mr. Jones. No, I was like, I like that you're, was his name. Gotcha. you're calling me Mr. Jones. Right, okay. So he lectured about discipline and started by calling discipline beautiful. Okay. He described, quote, how an athlete feels having worked hard and regularly to be successful at a sport, how a ballet dancer or painter works hard to perfect a movement. He dedicated patients, uh, uh, the dedicated patience of a scientist in pursuit of an idea. It's discipline, that self-training, control, the power of the will, the exchange of physical hardships for superior mental and physical uh, faculties. Ron. Uh, the ultimate triumph. Okay. What's happening right now? We then ordered the class to sit up straight. Before they could sit how, uh, however they liked. He didn't care how they sit. Now he's like, you have to sit in a specific way. But their chairs are all like in a line, yeah. right? Okay. Jones then lectured intensely on the importance of good posture, telling, it hel telling them it helped them breathe easier and made them concentrate better. Uh huh. <laughs> the students all sat up straight in their chairs. And next, Jones walked down the aisles and criticized each student making sure they sat perfectly where their feet flat on the floor and their hands on the small of their back, forcing their spine up straight. So he's trying to like answer the question of like, how did, how did Germany get away with this shit? But I'm still waiting to find out how. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. He told them sitting like this, uh, that made them breathe easier, like I said, and if they're breathing easier, they could think better. And their answers would be more concise. Sure. So once Jones was satisfied with how everyone's sitting, everyone's sitting the way he wanted, he had them all stand up and walk outside the classroom. Okay. And then he told them to do an exercise. Run back to their chairs and sit down at attention, as he'd shown them, as fast as possible. And it was chaos. <laughs> The students are rushing in and making noise, bumping into each other. Jones says, you can do it faster. And so they do it again and again until they tighten it up. And the more they did it, the better they get at it. In a short amount of time, they move quietly into class and to their seats in an orderly fashion within 15 seconds. Okay. <laughs> so learned a lot today at school. Well, it took, it took hardly any time to get them there. But, what, so? Jones timed them with a stopwatch. And then he was ready to move on. He was like, okay, you've done it. But one student put his hand up and said, quote, um, I think we can do it quicker. Oh, this kid. And so they did it. There's always again. this kid. Near the end of the hour, Jones decided to, quote, push the tolerance of the class for regimented action. He introduced new rules. Students must be sitting in class at the attention position before the late bell. All students must carry pencils and paper for note taking. When asking or answering questions, a student must stand at the side of their desk. Okay. <laughs> they practiced short, silent reading sessions and then uh, were asked questions, and students who responded in a sluggish manner were rep reprimanded and forced to repeat it again and again until it was a model of punctuality and respect. Okay. 
I miss Ron. <laughs> What's up, Mr. Jones? <laughs> the intensity of the student's response became more important than what they were talking about. Students were rewarded for making an effort and were acknowledged for it in a crisp and attentive manner. Now, the students are down with all this. Oh, well, yeah, okay. But they, so they, they, they look at this as like he is actually doing something? Yeah. Okay. And they did everything he asked. And he couldn't tell if they thought it was a game or they enjoyed the discipline or wondered if he could push them even further. So the next day, he comes in, it's Tuesday, and when he arrives, he finds something totally unexpected. They're all sitting at attention the way he made them sit before. Yeah, that was the deal. But he didn't think that they were gonna keep doing anything. What is his point, what is he doing? Well, he was planning to resume the lecture and just talk about what they had done the previous class. But because they'd all like sat back down, he was like, hmm. But then he goes, well, it seems like they want more of the experiment. Is there a curriculum? Is there anybody? No. It's a teacher making up. Uh, teachers back then, you could do your own curriculum. Uh, okay. So he's go... decided to teach Nazi posture? Yes. Okay. So they're sitting there stone-faced, rigid in their desks, waiting for instructions. So he decides, well, I'll keep the experiment going. Okay. But now he didn't know where he was taking it. Well, that's not good. Well, so he, because he didn't expect it. He thought he'd come in and give a lecture, but well, they're then, all. But then what that says is your experiment's over. You don't then go, well, what am I trying to prove now? Let's keep proving. So now he'd be making up as he went along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's again. So it's like improv uh, fascism. Yes. He's like scatting an experiment. <laughs> He's just not like... He's scatting Hitler. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. ba da ba ba ja sit in the chairs, yeah. So he goes to the chalkboard, and he had written strength through discipline the previous day. And today he writes strength through community. And he wrote, community is a bond between individuals who work and struggle together. It's raising a barn with your neighbors. It's feeling that you are part of something beyond yourself, a movement, a team, la raza, a cause. La Rasa means a movement. He lectured that the community was more important than the individual. Okay. At that point, he gave them the feeling of being part of a group by having them whisper together. Okay. And then start chanting together. Okay. And then stopping their feet at the same time. He also had them practice yelling strength through discipline together as a class. Okay. Quote, first I would have two students stand and call back our motto, then add two more, and to finally the whole class was standing and reciting. It was fun. The students began to look at each other and sense the power of belonging. Everyone was capable and equal. They were doing something together. This gave them a feeling of being part of something bigger than themselves. Outside the schools, uh, the things that was going on with Black Panthers and other groups mm -hmm. you know, in the country. And then he gave the community a name. He called them the third wave. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Jones was a surfer, and in surfing lore, waves come in chains, one right after the other, and the third wave is usually the strongest wave. Okay. So with strength through discipline, Jones told the students that by sticking together, they would be the third wave of America. The strong wave. The strongest wave. Okay. He but told them they could all sorry, share. Yeah. Sorry, they're going to be the th they're going to be the third. Wave of America? Yep. What's happening? <laughs> is he is he like simulation? Yes, but it's quite a jump into day two. Oh yeah. So is he now is he now going like there's some real power here? Well, he's yeah, he he's teaching them through a simulation what it would be like and at the same time he's feeling a little powerful i do not like i will once again go back to mm -hmm. what i'm feeling yeah. which is that i don't like the question he's trying to answer <laughs> and i don't like the starting of how he's doing it <laughs> he told them the entire class would share a grade if they all worked together by doing their homework together they would all get a's he wanted them to share answers, and they started working together so that everyone would get an A. Uh, this wasn't as popular with the really good students as it was with the 
not as good students. This is the, for the students like myself. This was like, this would happen at times where they'd be like, look, you fail together, you succeed together. Yeah. I'd be one of those kids like, all right, <laughs> we're all failing. They'd be like, fuck. But now all the students in class were answering questions because they were working together as a group and the smarter ones were teaching the less smarter ones. And so he introduced a new rule. They all had to answer by first saying Mr. Jones and they had to answer in three words or less. Now, before classes ended on the second day, Jones told them that the third wave members saw each other. If they saw each other in the hallway or wherever. Oh, here we go. They were to hold up their hand in a C shape, <laughs> like a wave. <laughs> he thought C looked like a wave cresting, right? Uh -huh. If two members saw each other and didn't salute, it meant they didn't share the community's values, and the one who didn't salute would be kicked out of the third wave. <laughs> so this is happening. Is, uh, with, he's got the three classes, uh -huh. and it's having the same effect in each class. Meaning that they're all in. Yeah, they're yeah. all getting on board. Right. What's not to like? The Again, that he's trying to answer a question about Nazism. <laughs> so, when the bell, quote, when the bell sounded ending the period, I asked the class for complete silence. With everyone sitting at attention, I slowly raised my arm, and with a cupped hand, I saluted. It was a silent signal of recognition. They were something special. Without command, the entire group of students returned the salute. So they now had a salute and slogans. A name. And a name. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 On Wednesday, Jesus, everyone sat down for his first class, and he decided just, again, he's doing this all on the fly. He decided to give them third wave ID cards. <laughs> so he looks in his desk, and he sees a pile of blank index cards. So he hands them out and says, these are third wave membership cards. Okay. Uh, he, while, while he's handing them out, he notices the class is larger. There's 13 students who've cut their other classes to be here. Is this a school? <laughs> what is this place? This just has classrooms. It's not a school. Well, it seems like a liberal or school. I'm waiting to find out that someone in this story is a ghost. <laughs> you, that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, it's I'm feeling saying, like this it. Isn't, this isn't an episode of Scooby-Doo. Well, it's feeling a little Scooby-ish. Well, I mean, they probably weren't allowed to cut their class, but they did. They wanted to be a part of whatever was happening. Like, they liked it the day before, so yeah, but, they... Okay, but yes, but, like, the idea that, like, you'd be like, where are you going? Like, oh, we're going to go to this other guy's class now. It's like, uh, oh, okay, no. Uh, so he's handing out the index cards before he does he takes three cards and he draws red X's on them <laughs> the student who got a red X well they were a little special they were to be informers I mean it's, I mean, it's, it's like 1984 the school <laughs> They were to report to Jones anyone who was not going along with the community values. Come on. What? For example, if, if an informer caught a third wave member not saluting or on or off campus, mm -hmm. they would be reported to Jones, mm -hmm. who'd kick them out of the community and send them to the library. How long until he thinks he's Jesus? Because <laughs> it always starts out kind of he fun. He knows he's a teacher. He knows what he's... Sure. They always know. They always know until... Well... I just talked to God. He also made the rule that if they gathered in groups bigger than two people, they would be kicked out of the third wave. So no three third wave members together. <laughs> on In class, on campus, off campus, wherever. Okay. Uh, now, while only three people in each class got the red X, yeah, other people started informing. Okay. Right, to get in his good grace. Sure. And they would turn in names, people who had done stuff that they thought was wrong. Wow. And this is, I'm sorry, Wednesday? This is Wednesday. <laughs> I mean. Hang on to your asshole, because this, this is, is going to be. This is an escalated timeline. 
Jones created a new membership process. Now a new member had to only be recommended by an existing member, and then Jones would issue them a card. Now okay. again, the cards are blank. And what's happening with the index cards is people are drawing a wave. Right. Like the, like the a hand wave. Right. Like it's like that. It's right. like a C. So they've each got their own individual card, but it's a card that's part of the community. Right. Uh, a new member just had to show his knowledge of the rules and pledge obedience to the rules. And okay. then Jones would let them in. Okay. That day, the principal gave Jones the salute at a faculty meeting. Lines are blurring. <laughs> Very quick. I mean, what's the principal doing? Okay, so the principal knew what the experiment. He, uh, knew, okay. he knew that he knew that Jones was doing an experiment about you know Nazi youth. Mm -hmm. he, he understood that. Uh, but Jones was not updating the principal about anything, and the principal didn't expect Jones to check in because he had approved the experiment and then left Jones alone, like he had done with many other simulations. Uh, he thought it was an effective way to teach kids about totalitarianism. Right. He's like, this is this is fine. Uh, so here's here's him talking to the kids. I explained how discipline and community were meaningless without action. I discussed the beauty of taking full responsibility for one's action. Of believing so thoroughly in yourself and your community or family that you will do anything to preserve, protect, and extend that being. I stressed how hard work and allegiance to the other would allow accelerated learning and accomplishment. I reminded students of what it felt like being in classes where competition causes pain and degradation. Situations in which students were pitted against each other in everything from gym to reading. The feeling of never acting, never being a part of something, never supporting each other. Just creating a community. Sure. Sort healthy, of. A healthy utopia. New rule. Oh, good. They're never supposed to criticize or question the third wave. <laughs> That's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> Eliminating questioning authority with one rule. Pretty big. Pretty big. But one student, Sherry Towsley, stood up and asked... Uh, when they could say what they felt about the third wave. Promote her. And he sent her to the library for the rest of the semester. Oh, my God. What? The, what? <laughs> for the semester? Yeah. Good God. Okay. This well, by the way, I mean, yeah, that sends a real clear message. <laughs> All right, you go to the library. Does anyone else ever want to try that? Oh, I didn't think so. Yeah, it immediately makes anybody who's yes. going to go, well, I'm not going to question it because yes. I don't want to sit in the fucking library. Yeah, it's the warden beating the snot out yeah. of the new prisoner to be like, all right. And she's just got she's just got an F, right? He said yes, you get an F. she's going to the library. Uh, more than one student was sent to the library. He also told them that he'd ruin their reputations with the other teachers. Oh, my God. That, whoever asked this question back on Monday is like, um, <laughs> or on last week or whatever. So students, students would just disappear and no one was talking about it, right? So these students who, so students would get narked on by the inf informers and then he would say, you're in the library and uh -huh. then you'd come into class and there'd just be, oh, Mark's desk is empty. Right. But then no one would bring it up because they don't want to be like, hey, what happened to Mark? Because you go to the library. That's right. Right. You like it? I don't know what to think. So. <laughs> uh, so Sherry believed that he would ruin her reputation, like he said, with the other teachers. Right. She, she totally believed it. Sure. So she's in the library, and the librarian wants to know why she's in the library <laughs> instead of in class because she's supposed to be in class. And Sherry's not telling her, and the librarian keeps pushing. So finally, she tells the librarian. Now, the librarian is freaked out. And she tells Sherry that she was born and raised in Nazi Germany. Okay. And it sounded like that's exactly like what was going on in Mr. Jones' class. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it's very similar. Yes, it's actually a condensed timeline. It's very good what he's doing. <laughs> Uh, so she told 
The librarian tells Sherry not to take it sitting down and to do something. This is some fight club shit. <laughs> Who's real? I'm worried. This is like the game. But Sherry didn't know what to do because it would have to have an impact and be uh, in secret. Mm -hmm. So when she goes home, she tells her parents and she decides to make anti-third wave posters, which she signed under an alias. And she came up with the alias, The Breakers, as in breaking a wave. Uh huh. So she's sort of making it seem like there's another group out there. Sure. Called The Breakers. Sure. Her father drove her to the school so she could put up the posters at night. But when she arrived the next morning, they were all torn down. <laughs> So while the experiment was going on, she would go every night to hang posters and they'd be torn down the next morning. Uh, eventually she would bring a ladder and go up so high that they couldn't all be torn down. Okay. Also probably not be read. What does that say up there? <laughs> what, is she, what does up it on say? On the flagpole, there's a, th a piece of paper. I can't see what the hell it says. Break, break, break room, break room, break, break, break room. Brave. Ah, whatever. Yeah. If it was important to be down here. Yeah, it'd be way down low. Anyway. Anyhow. So, there were a bunch of ideas of what to do coming out of his classes. Now, he gave a lecture about strength through action. They started making posters and putting them up. Members had to pass out flyers. Tables were set up in quarters, and members of the third wave would try to enlist other students. This, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, it's it's when you first when you first hear this, as I did, the the rapid pace of it is astounding. But also the at this point, and you don't even need to confirm or whatever. But at this point, it's like how aware is everyone as to what's going on? Because you would think that the second that even if it was your class where you have free reign, that you, if another principal or another teacher saw you like recruiting students to come to your class, it's weird. It's like class <laughs> teachers don't normally compete with each other. You know what I'm saying? They don't. They usually don't compete for students. Uh, again, the the other teachers in the school already don't like him. Right. Okay. So I don't know how that all works out. I don't know the the dynamic. But it is legitimately like yeah. It's the, a, the, the feeling of the librarian and the feeling of other teachers there is one where they're like, he is just fully going rogue. Yeah. See, okay. Yeah. For okay. sure. All right. Yeah. But there's also a lot of simulations at the school, so there's a sort of gray area. And then uh, I didn't read anything about what other teachers thought. I, okay. Because I think they're mostly all dead. So uh, I, I just heard what old students had to okay. say. Okay, okay. So, um, right, so strength through action, right? They're putting up posters, trying to enlist other students. A senior, Rich Sloss, okay. is passing a table between classes. Two members standing there at the table, and they've got the poster up behind them, right? Okay. Right. Uh, they say, uh, would you like to join? And then he says, well, what's, what's it about? And they say... Uh, Want to get an empty index card and make a C? They say strength through unity. And he says, right, okay. Uh, I get what you stand for. Uh, but what's it about? And they say strength through unity. And he's like, okay, so you can't tell me like what it's about. Yeah. And he goes, so no, I don't want to join your group because I don't know what it is. And then one of the members came around the table with a, a spiral binder and a pencil and said, uh, what's your name? And Rich said, I'm not going to give you my name. And then the second guy came around and Rich thought he was about to get in a fist fight. Okay. And he says, I'm not giving you names. And then on that day in the school, there were fist fights breaking out between third wave 
members and other students. One member quote, my only feelings at that point were that we were in the right and the people picking the fights were in the wrong. He's in the third wave. That they weren't seeing what we were up to was nothing bad. It had a lot of energy and excitement and a lot of purpose. Oh my God. So this is just the greatest teacher of all time. <laughs> Is that what this is? I mean, so I'm, I'm conflicted. So, um, most uh, effective. Yeah. So when I heard other students were fighting third wave members, uh, then that just meant they didn't know what they were doing. If they knew what we were doing, they would want to join. And then there were also some students who were so desperate to join that they were excluded. Is this still Wednesday? <laughs> It's still Wednesday. This is still Wednesday. This is three days. Into it's still the Wednesday. Week. It's still Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, he's got to be like, I'm going to run out of my lesson plan by Friday. Yeah. I mean, Jones knew everything was going on because informers are literally telling him everything that is going on. Like he's getting information about everything at this point and it's 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 everybody it's not just his main informers so and, yeah well and he and he is taking he is taking all this information in and this and he is just going like i i think there's two things happening i think that I, and i can't say for sure but he was definitely he definitely talks about how he was slightly intoxicated by the power okay that's kind of all i wanted to know but it at the same time, I think he's fascinated by how quickly this is happening. Sure. Right. But on both accounts. As a teacher. On both accounts, there's not any kind of negative perception he's feeling necessarily. No. He also has. He he's, also he understands. Has okay, yeah. Okay, he also okay, understands okay, this is okay, weird. Okay. Um, so. <laughs> but he must be leaving school like, shit, what am I going to do tomorrow? <laughs> uh, so he's, he's finding out what someone was telling their best friend. Like he's. People are telling him fucking everything. Right. So because of this, students now don't know who to trust. The three official informers were actually interrogating other members on their own to get as much information as they could. Okay. And they would give Jones detailed reports, even on conversations students had with their parents. Okay. With the information, Jones held mock trials, saying his secret police had given him information, and then he'd call out a member in class. The member would stand up. He would tell them they had violated a rule, like being seen fraternizing with known revolutionaries. And then the class would start chanting in unison, guilty, guilty, guilty. And the person would be banished to, to the, the library. library. <laughs> Sherry was like, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry walked by a friend in the hallway who saluted at her. And Sherry did not return the salute. Yeah. Well, she's been banished. And her friend was shocked and said, what do you, you didn't return the salute. And Sherry told her, well, she's not in the movement. And so I'm not going to return the salute. And from that moment on, her friend acted like she didn't exist. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, Is this where of, David Miscavige went to high school? <laughs> a couple of a couple of, uh, I don't know if it was more people did this or if it was just these two dudes, but they used STD as a acronym for strike through discipline. And then they were joking about it. And then one joked that STD meant stronger than dirt because that was Tide's slogan at the time. Okay. And then they laughed. And then he went to class and was called out by Jones for saying STD meant stronger than dirt. And he looked at his friend. His friend just stared straight ahead, and then he was banished from oh class. Oh my god! So now friends, good friends. Yes, those are best friends snitching on each other. Yes, big brother. So, uh, hey, more like stronger than dirt. Right? <laughs> How stupid is Tide right now? Jones insisted on walking with two bodyguards. Uh, Dave so the plot's lost they would they would walk the halls and as they walked they would all salute in unison and students would all salute back <laughs> uh, 
And then one bodyguard How was school? <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, we're basically taking it over. And I'm sorry, mother. What do you mean, how was school? Interesting. Uh, I'm just asking how school was. <laughs> Interesting. And let me guess. You want to know how school was because I'm... Uh, my, you're my son? Your son? Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Why you so saying? you think because I'm your son that you're allowed to have knowledge of anything that goes on? Why? Well, I'm just asking how school was. I'm not. I don't. There's the question again. What are you doing, Mother? Do you like the library? Yeah, I, yeah, I enjoy. You it. do? I, yeah, I like to get. Well, yeah, books but I have and... a good time in there with Sherry, won't you? Well, who's Sherry? Exactly. You're part of the Breakers. What? I knew it from the day I saw you. Okay, go to your room. You're, you you're, go to you you go to my room. I'm going to yours. What? See? <laughs> Jesus, you don't say it. See? What are you doing? It's a podcast. People can't <laughs> see I'm doing it. Uh, so one bodyguard followed Jones into the teacher's lounge. Are, are the bodyguards out? Are they just separate people? Did he hire two legit bodyguards, or are these like seventh graders? Uh, well, I haven't gotten to it yet, but he basically got guys from the car club. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dave, I can't wait till you get to it. <laughs> okay. So they go to the teacher's lounge. One of the bodyguards follows him in, and the English teacher looks at the kid and says, "Well, you're not supposed to be in in here because this, you're a student." And the bodyguard looks at the English teacher and says, "Quote: I'm not a student. I'm a bodyguard." And by the way, I ate Mrs. Harris's pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so late in the day, and if you're in the teacher's line, you're a teacher and you go, Hey, you can't be in here. And someone goes, I'm a bodyguard. You're like, well, I don't want to, this I, is yeah. really uh, weird. How is your uh, little, uh, thing going that you're doing in your class? Cause there's students in here who are, uh, like Nazis. So that's weird. <laughs> He's doing a signal and has a slogan. Uh -huh. Um, you like the library, Mrs. Jensen? No, I don't. I, look, I'm not part of the simulation or whatever it is. I'm just, I, I, I'm an English teacher. I'm just here having a little bit of spaghetti before I go back to my class. Okay. So that's where I'm at. Spaghetti, huh? Don't. Interesting. Don't, don't do this. It's a good meal to eat alone in a library. Don't do this. Just saying. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. It's just Wednesday. I, I'm aware of the day. It's almost Thursday. Thursday's okay. gonna get crazy. Well, I, we're teaching Dickens, so I actually have to get back to. Okay. You'll yeah, your student can stay. I don't give a shit. You'll regret this. Okay. You crossed the wrong man. I. You got so, to cross the wrong. Man. Shut up. Give me your spaghetti. No, here. Yeah. Mm. Stupid. It's mine. So. I'm in charge. So Sherry. Is getting curious about what's happening in the class. Yes, Sherry has a lot of time on her. Hands. She's in the library, so she walked by the class to see what was going on. But she's so fearful, she doesn't look in the class. She just walks by and does like a side eye, you know, kind of deal. Yeah, she's looking for peripheral updates. Yeah, and the class is standing room only. So she's like, mm. and people are waiting to get in. Oh my god, it's got a line. This Who, there's a, a class that's a club now. <laughs> There's, it's a sophomore class and now juniors and seniors are going in and joining the class. I'm 31. I'd love to take a stab <laughs> at it too. Uh, so Jones uh, begins to become concerned when he realizes that the kids from the higher up classes are joining. And especially when he learned that students from two other nearby high schools well, wanted no, to come well, hey, and join. Hey, there, come on. I, I know there's no rules so far, but you can't leave your school. I take one class a week over there, that other one. I go to cover. I do fascism uh, at the other one. And yeah. then this one I do like science and stuff. Uh, so it's growing at an alarming rate. Yes. Jones is now concerned it could get out of control, but... He keeps it going, fueling it with fiery speeches about the importance of discipline and community. So he's feeling it, right? Uh huh. Now, by the end of Wednesday, Third Wave's membership had grown to 200 students. 
but how many how many students are there? I you know you know that I don't know. I didn't. I never. That's a kind of there's that's a, a lot, lot of there's a lot of information that's not. Uh, so three uh, classes. What I mean, class size wise, what are we talking? Eighteen? Th- no, 30? I think it's a little. Yeah, let's say thirty. Thirty. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking ninety. So now we're up to like two hundred. Oh, so yeah, we've, we've doubled in size. Yeah. Uh, as far as that bodyguard, Jones would later write that the bodyguard was one of his dumber students. His name was Robert. Robert was a hard worker who always sat in Jones' classroom during lunch alone because no one wanted to eat with him. And now this had given him a purpose and meaning. It's so weird. So the outcasts are being sucked in. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> They're part of something. But for, a kid, a kid a is always for how long? A kid is always alone. A kid who's never had a friend. Now this is a thing that he can do. Yeah. Now he has power over people. This is a nightmare. <laughs> That night, Jones... This is how Bane started. It is. That night, Jones received a phone call from a rabbi uh, of a concerned parent. Okay. Jones, quote, I told him we were merely studying the German personality. He seemed delighted and told me not to worry. He would talk to the parents and calm their concern. Uh, Hey, rabbi, worry. (laughs) Yeah. Be bothered. But like I said, Jones was liking it. He liked the power and control. His wife told him to stop. His wife? It was dangerous, but still, he knew the experiment was, you know, getting out of control. Yeah, okay. So this is out of control. On Thursday. Oh, my God. The third wave was, I know, it's Thursday. The third wave was arrived at school to find that the breakers, which was just Shelly, had broken into Jones's class and torn down all of their poster. And she taped her own posters up and wrote on the board. You know, breakers. The, the, like, it's basically like, resist this, don't do this. It's, but it's just her. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the break-in to the third wave headquarters was the talk of school the entire day. Okay, so now it's Watergate. <laughs> now it's called the headquarters. Uh-huh. Yeah, now it's definitely, <laughs> the terms are scarier. Um, well, that's us. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Uh, so... So she's putting up her own posters. Um, in the first class in the morning, Jones counted 80 students. He's only supposed to have 30. Jones c- came in with a bodyguard, who's now his full-time bodyguard. Okay. Members of the car club appointed themselves his bodyguards, right? Uh, and one was now posted at the door at all times because of the break-in. Sure. So now, even if there's no class or whatever, lunch... There's someone posted at the door okay. to watch the headquarters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jones closed the curtains this first morning. He ch- closed the curtains, turned off the lights, shut the door, and locked it, and made all the members stand and stay st- stay standing. Okay. And then started the day by mock assassinating two of the students. He said, "You're assassinated, and you're assassinated." Go to the library. Go to the library. They were moved. He then told the students, this is not a game. It's not just this class. He said the third wave was being used by teachers all over the country, 1,025 schools, and they're coordinating a movement to create a third political party that would take over the country. Okay, so he did have something for Thursday. (laughs) What? (laughs) He didn't, though. He came in and did it on the fly. <laughs> he dude. didn't plan any of this. He would come in and just something would hit him and he would fucking do it. <laughs> the students in the class, he said, were essential to the revolution. And the ones who had been removed were not up to it. But you guys are. Quote, across the country, teachers like myself have been recruiting and training a youth brigade capable of showing the nation a better society through discipline, community, pride, and action. If we can change the way this the is school really is dangerous. run. This is really dangerous. We can change the way that factories, stores, universities, and all other institutions are run. You are selected. You are a selected group of young people chosen to help this cause. If you will stand up and display what you have learned in the past four days, we can change the destiny of this nation. Uh -uh. No one asked him for proof. 
and there is no way to get Britain so way before the internet. So by there's the no way, way to look it up. By the way, also you don't ask for proof in this situation. I mean, you are in a cult. Well, then you get an F. You, but you go to the library. Yeah. So, so you I, just go. So anyone else has any questions? No. Okay, give them the C. John said the third wave was being created to address the many issues of the time uh, that began after the assassination of President Kennedy. Okay. In 1967, there had been more assassinations. The civil rights battle was raging. And most importantly, the Vietnam War was on. And all of these kids were looking at the draft in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the third wave now seems like an answer Mm -hmm. to possibly being drafted that's why that's why this is like it is now that that's why now i am like this is dangerous so the third wave can actually save their lives right if, no. if a new party is being created with youth <laughs> don't sell me to take over <laughs> then to them yes that's but that's why this is that's why great. this is veering into this state of uncontrollable <laughs> uh, nature in a bad way <laughs> Uh, now, there's also a lot of disenchantment after the ki killing of Kennedy uh, that he'd been tapping into. So this was a real youth movement to change the world. Tomorrow, the students were told they would meet the third wave's presidential candidate at an assembly, and the new leader would be giving an address on TV. <laughs> on the fly? <laughs> Yeah. What's his plan? Well, I gotta go. Hey, honey, can't go out tonight. I gotta find a presidential candidate. Maybe this wasn't on the fly. Maybe this party thought up about the presidential candidate beforehand. Um, so it seems believable, especially because a student in the back of the room holds up a magazine he had brought in, and inside it was a two-page ad, and and no one can remember what it's for, but it's like Time Magazine or something. And the ad is a two-page ad that says the third wave is coming. So there's just this crazy this fucking random, really, that wow. on this day, and the kid shows it. So then Ron sees that, and, and he's like, we're, we're, he points to his proof. Yeah. He goes there. See, hey, right the there. third wave, right there, it's com is coming. Thank and you, then, Darren. Good stuff, Darren. And then and then he abruptly walked out. Okay. So the the you know you're a kid in the class, and the teacher says this, and then a kid pulls out an ad. You're oh yeah, you're we're fucking, gonna be famous. You're in. We're awesome. We're gonna change the world. History will take note of us. So he could have, you know, he abruptly walked out. And my, my thought when I heard that he abruptly walked out was, is that that's sort of a peak. Like when a kid pulls out the ad, now you walk out uh, uh, because if he stays there, it could be questioned or whatever. So he shuts down any sort of ability So because they, they can't question it with each other. So he's put it out there. He's got a backup of proof. Now he's out. Now he probably not went to the bathroom to cry about how amazing this was going. He was like, there are no worlds left to conquer. I am the greatest. Uh, so he says the announcement for the big reel the next, the next day is completely unexpected, even for him. He doesn't know what he's doing. The announcement of the next day with the presidential campaign? Yeah, he doesn't know. He, he knows he, he made that announcement, but he doesn't know what he's going to do. Uh, so now every student is completely on board. Some had just up to this point Except been going. Except for Sherry. She's in the library like, guys, he's weird. He's weird. So some had just been going along for the grade. Uh, but then others were like into it. But then this now is completely flipped on its head. Like it's become like a fucking thing. Well, now they think they're going to change the world. So some, some apparently n never believe it. But, you know, sure. it sounds like a lot, a lot. Too. So one girl, after this happens, after he leaves, tells them not, go, not to go to the assembly tomorrow, that this is completely wrong. The rest of the class just stays silent. Doesn't yep. say By anything. the way, how about this? Do us all a favor. Get a head start uh, to the library. Okay? <laughs> get walking to the library. Uh, so, you know, and one of the reasons they're not doing it is because it's a – they're they're actually thinking well this is part of a country ride movement and if they blow it if, if their school blows it they're under this like idea that if they blow it the whole thing falls apart so they're now like well i'm i'm doing something that could save the lives of a bunch of other kids right. from the war or whatever yes. so they're enormous empowerment uh so their minds are blown they're sworn to secrecy one student however told her mom and her mom called and told the school counselor and then the school counselor went to talk to Jones, and Jones exiled the student to the library. Oh, she did. Oh, that's interesting. Um, 
Well, I will uh, figure it out when she comes into class today. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, hey, Karen. Hi. How are you? Good. Yeah. Now, I want you to uh, know that um, I have heard some of your concerns. What? No, 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 no. I don't have Karen. 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 You have concerns? I don't. Karen. I don't. I don't. Karen. Hmm? You have concerns. I d- I you have concerns, and you raise them, and I'm I'm happy you did. I didn't raise I'm them. I'm happy you did. But I did. Look, I talked to your mother. No. I talked. No, no, and don't no. get upset. What? Don't get upset. I talked to your mother. My That's, mom? Yes, but 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 again, because, you know, I think you mentioned is, something to is her. Is my mom an informer? No, 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 no. What is happening? Why did you do that? You do it with your eyes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, your mother's. What? She doesn't have the tightest of lips, so she's saying some things that maybe she shouldn't around here. But, but Karen, what I want you to know is that the third wave respects what you did. Oh, okay. And I that's just, what makes it so gratifying. I was just saying I feel weird. To tell you yeah. to pack your book bag. God damn it. Because you're going what? to the library. Oh, I thought get you were going to gonna say Hawaii. Get to it step felt in. like you were going to say Hawaii. Get to step in and get to the oh, library. God damn you go to the library. Hey, tell Sherry I said, what's up? Go to the library. Uh-huh. Yeah. Keep yapping. Keep yapping. Uh-huh. I'm Hitler now, baby. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but it's Thursday at 145, and I'm Adolf Hitler at Coupler High School or whatever it's called. So another student told his parents that they shouldn't go to work tomorrow <laughs> but to be by a TV at noon the next day because something really big was going to go down. Hey, guess what? Our kid's going to kill someone. I mean, you're like, uh, Todd, no. <laughs> During the entire experiment, when parents would call to complain, the principal stood up for Jones' methods and explained that he, uh, what he was doing. Is it totalitarian? You've you got to understand that what he's trying to do is create the Third Reich in the school. It's pretty out of the box. <laughs> no one knew Jones was making it up as he went along. Not even the principal. Okay. The next day, uh, oh no, wait. So, so two, uh, okay, so the next day, it's Friday now, right? Yeah. Yes. Um, the students arrived and Jones is not in the classroom. Two bodyguards from the car club are there. And they said they were going to escort the students to the assembly in room H1. Okay. So it's like a almost theatery type sure. thing. Sure. A female student spoke up and told the others not to go. She was written up by her classmates. One other female student stayed behind as all the other students headed out. So just from just, you know, so the four people that stand out as standing up to whatever's going on are all women, Mm -hmm. which I find very interesting. Mm. Um, I mean, Dave, that feels like it's a knock against guys. A little bit. <laughs> well, don't be raising your hand. Just do what the guy says, stupid. Uh, so the lecture hall, uh-huh. H1, fills up with about 200 third waivers. Some who had come from other schools. And weird again. Bodyguards are standing at the doors. Sure. The news media had heard about what's going on. And have now arrived to cover it. There are television cameras, there are reporters, there are photographers. So in a lot of ways, the appearance of this is now exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. Right, okay. Just wanted to... The lights are off, the hall's dark. Jones is standing at a podium. Everyone's sitting at ease as they had been taught, stiff, with their hands on their back. And Jones then said, quote, Let us show everybody the extent of our training. And they stood up and belted out their slogan, strength through discipline, strength through community, strength through action. And while they did this, they held up their C salutes. This is, is there, this is there, is Friday, is by there, the way. Is there any student who's like, hey, wasn't it weird that Candy asked last week about how the Nazis came to be? Yeah, I think there are some students. But again, <laughs> he's crossed this line when he did oh, the... Yeah. Well, at this point, you're like... So I mean, this is he has created. He has genuinely created a reality. So they start their chants quiet and then uh, ratchet up to a, just a fucking yelling roar. Sure. Jones then had them sit at attention. There was a television in front of the class. 
Joan said the party leader would come on at any moment. He turned on the screen, which just showed snow, right? Uh huh. And then he left. And then the bodyguards left. And nothing happened. And after a while, the TV crews and reporters left. A few students, but almost all the students stayed in their seats, seated, staring ahead. At snow. At snow. And this went on for a little bit. And then one student started looking around and saw everyone was just staring blankly. And he said they looked dead to him. And with the doors closed, Jones, the bodyguards, and reporters gone, his mind went to a concentration camp because that's what they did when they exterminated Jews is they shut the doors uh. and dropped gas down. And so he's picturing gas being dropped from above and he thinks, oh my God, they trapped us in here and they're gonna kill us. Oh my God. And he panics and he stood up and he yelled, I'm getting the hell out of here. He was convinced the doors were locked and they were trapped. So he was the first one to run. Other students jumped up and started running to the doors in panic. As soon as they reached the doors, The lights came on and Jones was standing in the back of the hall and he started whispering the mantras. Strength through discipline, that stuff? He's just trying to calm them down now. (laughs) And it works. The students join him and start whispering until everything's calmed down. And then someone yells, there is no party leader, is there? And Jones turns on a projector playing a documentary about Nazi youth. Oh my God. I mean, is he like, give me eight mics to drop? (laughs) Hand me all the mics. Thank you. (laughs) What? And he said, quote, there is no leader. There's no such thing as a national youth movement called the third wave. You have been used, manipulated, (laughs) shoved by your own desires into the place you now find yourself. You are no better or worse than the German Nazis we have been studying. What? These kids, I mean, what? They're like, a uh, a lot of students start to cry. Oh, my God. Quote, shocked. The look of shock was like the earth was ending. They didn't know what to do. They couldn't walk. They were sitting down. Some people wanted to leave, but didn't know whether to leave or not. I thought you guys knew. I thought you guys knew what we were doing. I mean, they're hugging each other. They're they're weeping. One student went to Shelly and told her it was over. Oh, Shelly. I thought her name was Sherry. Uh, Oh, no. I might be wrong. Okay. Well, whatever, whatever. Whatever. So they go um, go to her and tell her it's over. And she thought, quote, oh, my God, they found me out. So when they come up, when a, a student walked up to her and said it's over, her first thought was they found it on the breakers. <laughs> like her first, her first so thought everyone was is like the man. on the absolute edge. Yeah. But then she was told, no, the movement's over, and she was being called back to the classroom. Okay. So she goes into the classroom, and when she went in, she said the students seemed like mirages. They were trembling, and she felt like if she just flicked at them, they would fall over. She's like, I read a really good book on lizards. <laughs> this is great. So these lizards. She... Um, so the year Jones did this was the year he was up for tenure. Oh, man. And he was already hated by the conservative school board and other teachers, so he was fucked. He lost his tenure. And he was fired. There were protests. Like, the students came out and held a massive rally. Pro him. Pro him. Right. Because they still love him, even though... I mean, again... Well, you have it, to... It, as, much as, as much as it was horrible, like, now you literally understand how Dave, fascism happens. Dave, I mean, that is as well... After a week of that, that is as well equipped as one can be to fight and and be aware of propaganda. Yeah. Uh, so there's protests to keep him there and a movement to try to keep him. But then, uh, Mr. Jones announced he'd be leaving anyway, because the Germany called, they're really, (laughs) they want me there for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Uh, cause the school board was going to restrict his teaching methods. So he's like, I can't stay here cause they're not going to let me do it. Right. They were like, we're not going to let you you start cults and, and authoritarian governments within the school. We're not saying that you can't teach what you want, but there will be 
Yeah, we no just more don't heighten Nazi tension. Yeah, we just don't want like a Nazi or like a Mussolini situation happening well, that's within kind this of school. a lot of what I was going to do in March. I was gonna yeah, go we're not into like brown shirts or any of that stuff. Like we're uh, just like sports are cool. You know what I mean? Like sports are fun, but like, a, but like a fascist movement within yeah. the school is not great. Oh, I thought you were going to lead me in the other direction. No, it's not good. No. Mm. So he left uh, Coverly to teach in San Francisco. The students felt a tremendous loss. Uh, this is what the principal of the experiment said, quote, I don't think it was out of control as a methodology or as a unit of learning. I thought it got out of control when he took that learning and tried to apply it to his contemporary school. He was actually coaching the United Student Movement, which had nothing to do directly with his class. But that's what I think is the immorality of what Ron Jones did. He took uh, his advantage as a teacher with a guaranteed audience of young people to try to indoctrinate them. He wasn't teaching them. He was indoctrinating them. And that's what I think his mistake was. It's his purpose, his intent, rather than his actual teaching that was the problem. Okay. I mean, to me, I'm like... I can't. Yeah, I, I. You almost can't separate them. What? I, it's. It's all yeah. kind of one lumped in. Yeah. Thing as far as like. Well, yeah. I mean, are you in or are you out? I can't. I don't think there's a way to really split hairs over like. I mean, did did what he did what he did did it make the point? It very much made the point. Very much made the point. Yeah. Uh, but Jones is never able to teach again the way he wanted. He works with adults now with special needs, teaching them poetry and things like that. Mm. Uh, He's also a noted author and playwright. And today he says there's no way he would do the third wave. He sees the experiment as a, quote, a big error made by a young teacher. And he realizes now that what he did was extremely dangerous. He wrote a short story about it 10 years later, which was turned into a play and then a TV special. The wave is now required reading in Germany, Israel, and some places in the United States. Mm. The majority of students who participated don't regret being involved. One student went as far as to create the Third Wave Institute in order to continue the discussion about how quickly fascism can rise in society. It would be amazing if it was like, we're keeping it going. (laughs) Ron, your vision is still true. Once we get the right candidate, we're ready. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I I think... What a and what I, a crazy! I mean, to me, the most startling thing is how, f- and, and this is what, and this is what I have read about when you read about when authoritarians take over or whatever fascism that it does happen super quickly. Uh, Dave, I mean, I think you can even, I mean, I think you can even see it. You see it now. I mean, yes. it's again, it's not within a week. This guy, well, but, this guy delivers but, like Grubhub. But when, but when. Like we're not there to the point where you don't want to talk to your neighbors or you can't trust anybody to say anything, but we're we're super close to you know I mean there's there's a lot of there's a lot of dudes in the army it's a massive amount who are oath keepers and crazy crazy religious handmaid's tailish mm-hmm. religious type dudes and they yearn for this. So we have a large, and there's always been a large section of of American society and pretty much all societies that want fascism. Mm-hmm. And that's just the reality of the situation. There are fascist parties running for office in every European country. That's just how it is. Some and now America well. yeah. gets that. Yeah. Now we've now they're out and about and they're public and they're going to always be there. Yeah. They're not always going to call themselves fascist, but. They're gonna have fascist ideals. That that is one of the, that. <laughs> that is such a weird episode. <laughs> this I should say. This is such a weird like. That is it is. <laughs> I mean, it's just kind of fucking brilliant. I, oh, I mean, it's brilliant! It, it, what it, he like, did, well, because because the first of all, you have to. Like his psychological understanding of how people work to be able to pull that off, but also like to be able to just take those things and apply them and make them work. Well, and to con- me, it's fascinating and to continue to do it and to then, continue yeah, to and do it throughout the week. Parts. To continue to go, okay, here's our new carrot. <laughs> yeah, like repeatedly, it I, it is surprising how quickly 
and effective it was. Part of it is probably that you are dealing with like, you know, I think maybe a school is a place where it is a little more like heightened as far as do you belong, do you not belong? Yeah, yeah. So there's a huge and then the war complex on. about that, and then the, the war, and then the Kennedy stuff, like you're talking about, all that. But still, you would think that more connections in the moment would be made, and more people would be vocal about that. But just the fact that happened from Monday to Friday. It's fast. There's the, I mean, I kept going back and going, this isn't right, right? This doesn't, but there's a, so most of this was taken from a, uh, a documentary, uh, which is on, if you have Amazon, it's on um, Amazon Prime. It's called The Lesson Plan. Um, and it, it literally does it. It just goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you're just like, what's happening? How is it fucking Friday? And this is all And he, the kids apart. are ready to kill. <laughs> And you and they're talking to students who are now older and talking about what they were thinking and feeling and it's just you're just like Jesus fucking Christ it's literally it's the Big Brother thing you brought up it's it's that thing where no one wants to talk no one wants to speak out yeah. like once you clamp down on that oh and once it's you, fucking game over well and once you, once you start to show you know it's it really is true and it's unfortunately the world we are kind of pining for like you're saying but it is like once you start once you start to replace reward with fear and then you show people many ways to get rewards within yeah. that fear-based system they will do it They'll i mean it. and that's what is very troubling about today's well, fragile well, fragile world and yeah and so there the most interesting thing and i think we can um, in our in our society right now is you have people who are like fuck this fascism we have to stop it and then you have the fascists and then you have this big group in the middle who want to go like, can we just go back to the way it was? Yes. And you're this people who are getting C's who are going along. Like those are the people right. they're, they're not stepping up to fight. They're not stepping up to do anything. they're just like, so I just want to keep my house and my car and just hang out and not do anything. You're like, well, eventually well, you're like, you're part of you're it. You're like this bubble's either going to get bled out or popped. Well, yeah. So you pick. Because guess but they, what? But they, they, they cannot see it that no, way. No, I know. But it is, I mean, that's that's what gets you dystopia. <laughs> yeah. Is by saying, you know, all I want is my little thing, my little thing. It's like, well, no, now is the time to sort of say I'm willing to sacrifice my car and my home to, like, fall on the sword for the greater good. We have a lot of politicians in this country who want to keep their jobs and want to keep taking money from Google and, and Lyft and Uber and don't want to actually step up. And kick this thing in the nuts. Yeah, and those are the ones that are the worst. And um, well, how and about they're mostly they're mostly Democrats who are corrupt that are doing that. There's a lot of Democrats that are trying to fight it, but there's a lot what of Democrats I, that I are find just corrupt. Fascinating about uh, the Democrats, the ones in charge, is the way that they say, "Let's do this. Let's investigate. Let's not do the financial stuff." <laughs> You know, wait, what, I'm sorry, what are you saying? Like, well, no, let's let's get him. I mean, obviously, Trump is, he's up. Oh, God. Matt, oh, we can't take four more years of this. Let's get him on the, the let's not to get into his financial stuff. And that's, and it's like, that's, well, that's corruption. Weird, weird corruption, caveat. Corruption is what leads to fascism. It's what yeah. the, everything, when there's well, no law. And, and you see now, look, they're all in one car. The second we try to take the keys away, we yeah. see that they're all just, oh, yeah. they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> they, they're, not, they're not battling for like anything in that car. They just want it to keep moving. And look, everyone has to understand fascism now because as uh, climate change happens and things start to break down, um, you're literally going to have a battle between eco-fascism and eco-socialism. Like the, the fascists are already using, yeah, they're already using climate change. To, oh yeah. To get done what they want done. Oh like, yes. They're, it, no, that's they, what they're doing. They, they actually, I would say the more prepared side has been the side that has said forever. We just need to keep saying it's futile. It either doesn't exist or it's futile. Yeah. And one of those will always work. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good. All right. Well, that's fun. Gobble, gobble, everybody. <laughs> Hope everyone's happy. Oh, Your wait, minds wait, wait, are wait, super simple. Let me read the other source. Uh, Jones's own essay, The Third Wave, 1967, and account. Those are the two sources. All right. Your minds are little. Your future's manipulated. Uh, there's no need to really bother for independent thought because uh, the people standing next to you are not capable of it. They'll be taken advantage of, and they'll stab you for corn pops. All right, gang. Stop podcast. Thanks.
See you in the library!